The Melba Story. The story of Australia's most famous woman. The true story, fully authenticated, and featuring another wonderful Australian singer, Glenda Raymond. The Melba Story, featuring in this chapter, Leonard Delaney. Early in 1908, during a concert at the Albert Hall, Melba was approached by the famous American entrepreneur Oscar Hammerstein, who had just built a new opera house, the Manhattan, in New York, and was determined to obtain the services of Melba for his first season. She, however, was just as determined to remain in England, and told Hammerstein so in no uncertain terms. Mr. Hammerstein, you're making rather a nuisance of yourself. Well, I know I am. It's a habit of mine. Well, it's a habit I detest. Oh, you'll get used to me. All my prima donnas do in time. I remember when I first engaged Calvé. She hated me like poison. I can well understand that. Ah, but wait a minute, madam. Later on, she changed her mind. Ask her, she said to me, you are my very good friend. Madam, they're still calling for you. You'll have to give them something else. Oh, dear. Well, how about Charming Bird again? Yes, wonderful. I'll just go and make an announcement. You'd better go, Mr. Hammerstein. No, no, no. I'll wait here for you. I was afraid of that.
After hearing that, I'm more set on getting you than ever. And I'm more than ever set on getting away from you, Mr. Oscar Hammerstein. Good night, my friend. Okay, Madam Elber. You can get rid of me tonight, but don't think I'm discouraged. No, ma'am, not one little bit. I'm going to keep right after you. I won't give you one minute's peace till you give in. Hello? Oscar Hammerstein. I've already told you, Mr. Hammerstein. I'll you in at the Biltmore. I'm going to hang up now. Now, wait a minute, madam. I won't wait even a second. Good morning, Mr. Hammerstein. I'm about to take my bath. Are you coming to America? No. Three thousand dollars a night. Not interested. And seeing when you like. I uh, leave my flat at once, or I'll call the police. <laughs> and he actually came to your bathroom door. Yes, Gladys. For one moment, I thought he was coming in. <laughs> what a man! I'd love to meet him. You'll never meet him through me. Anyway, he's probably gone back to America. Anyone at home? Gladys! It's he, Hammerstein. Who else would walk in like that? I'm glad I caught you in, madam. Don't you know, Mr. Hammerstein, that you should never enter someone else's place without being asked? Oh, I never bother about things like that. Say, who's your friend? I'd like to be introduced. Well, you're not going to be. But, Nellie, I'd love to meet Mr. Hammerstein. Oh, very well. Lady de Grey, may I present Mr. Oscar Hammerstein? Say, uh, Lady, uh, would you tell her she's got to come and sing for me? <laughs> I'm afraid, Mr. Hammerstein, that she wouldn't take any notice of what I said. Besides, do you think she'd be wise? What do you mean, wise? To sing for a man who's trying to do the impossible. Impossible? You'll never be able to succeed in opposition to the Metropolitan. Oh, that's what you think. I don't need a lot of stiff shirts to keep my opera house going. I'm going to rely on the music-loving public. In that case, Mr. Hammerstein... You're doomed from the start. Uh, we'll see about that. Now, what about it, Madame Elba? Are you going to sing for me? No. Now, look, money talks, okay? Well, I'll let my money settle this argument. Here you are. One thousand, two thousand, three, four, five. Don't scatter your notes all over my carpet. Oh, they're yours, not mine. That's ten thousand... Twenty, thirty. Oh, Nelly, he's crazy. Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand. Now that's enough to go on Mr. with. Mr. Hammerstein, pick that money up and take it out of my flat. You mean that? Yes, I do. I won't stand any more of your nonsense. You really mean you won't sing for me? I've been trying to tell you that for weeks. I thought you were just playing hard to get. Well, I'm not. I meant every word I said. I'm not singing in America this year. This is the first time Oscar Hammerstein's had to admit defeat. I'm sorry, but that's the way it has to be. Okay. I guess I'll just have to put on my opera season without you. But now it's going to be tough. Mighty tough. What is it, Mary? Why did you send for me? I want you to read this cable from Oscar Hammerstein. Show me. Season, a failure. Last night's receipts, just over a thousand dollars. Only you can save me now. Will you change your mind? Oscar Hammerstein. Well, you did have a lucky escape. If you'd have gone to America, you'd have ruined your reputation forever. You think so, Gladys? Why, of course. To be associated with such a venture, why, why, it was bound to fail. A man like that, what does he know of opera? He knew enough to ask me to sing for him. And you knew enough to refuse. I refused because I needed a rest. 
But I liked Hammerstein, Gladys. He's like me, a fighter. He's got pluck. And I'd like to help him. Help him? How? I'm going to send him a cable right away. Leaving for New York on next boat. In a few moments, we'll return to the Melba story. The Melba story. Madam Malber, I represent the Herald Tribune, and our readers want to know why you've come to New York to sing for Oscar Hammerstein. Why shouldn't I? Well, you've always been a Metropolitan star, and now you're with the opposition. You got any questions, you ask me. Why, hello, Mr. Hammerstein. I was just asking Madam Malber how much you were paying her. I'm paying her the highest terms ever, and she's worth it. Thank you, Mr. Hammerstein. And let me say that I'm quite happy to be singing at the Manhattan. Uh, what operas are you going to do? La Traviata, La Boheme. La Boheme? I heard there was some trouble about getting the rights of that opera. No trouble at all. It's all fixed. But isn't it true that the Metropolitan has applied for an injunction restraining you from performing Boheme in the United States? Oscar Hammerstein says that Madame Elba will appear in La Boheme. That's all there is to it. Hmm. How do you feel about that, madam? I know nothing about the matter. But you can be sure of one thing, that I'll be opening at the Manhattan with La Traviata. Thank you. 
I can now call you that, if only we are joined together by a common admiration for a very great artist. Not only a great artist, but a great woman. And let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, despite all you've read in the newspapers, I am going to do Puccini's La Boheme at the Manhattan and Melba's going to sing the part of Mimi. Big news, madam. I've won my battle. The court's given a verdict in my favor. Then we can do La Bohème? Yes, if we can get the music. Yeah, the trouble is that the Metropolitan has lodged a further appeal. In the meantime, I'm denied access to the authorized score. Then what can we do? We'll need orchestra parts, chorus parts, stage directions. Well, you know the opera, don't you? Oh, yes, very well indeed. Okay, you take charge. You're the producer. But what about the music? I'll get it. <laughs> Take a look at these, madam. The band parts of La Boheme. How did you get them? We won't go into that. Now, uh, where's the conductor? He was here just now. Oh, there he is. Cavarini! Uh, yes, Mr. Hammerstein. Uh, what is it? Here are the orchestral parts of La Boheme. Where did you get these? Uh, what's that to you? I could not take part in an unauthorized performance. But, uh, Signor Campanini... It is no use to argue, madam. I resign. I quit. Good. Hi. Here, wait a moment. Come back here. Well, now what are we going to do? Well, I'll leave that to you. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Hammerstein. I can't conduct the orchestra as well as sing the leading part. Oh, you do the singing and the producing, and I'll do the rest. What do you mean? I'll conduct the performance myself.
night, a memorable night, my friends. And here's the man who made it possible, Oscar Hammerstein himself. I just want to say this, that I couldn't have done it without the loyal support of all concerned, and particularly one person Madam Elder, she's a very wonderful person. God bless her. And you really must go back to England? I'm afraid so. I... I haven't been very well, you know. <laughs> oh, that's a laugh. <laughs> Why, you've worked harder than anyone in the company. Yes, and it's been a little too much for me. As a matter of fact... As a matter of fact, I... Uh, what's the matter? I, I don't know. I feel rather strange. Well, you're not going to faint or anything like that, are you? I've never... fainted in my life. Oh. Hey, Madam Wilbur. Hey, hey, quick! Somebody get a doctor! The strain of the American season, undertaken solely because of a quixotic desire to help Oscar Hammerstein, has proved too much for Melba. We'll learn the sequel to this dramatic collapse in the next fascinating chapter of The Melba Story.
The Melba story was written by John Ormiston Reed and produced by Dorothy Crawford. The Australian Symphony Orchestra was conducted by Hector Crawford. The role of Melba was spoken by Marcia Hart and sung by the Australian Coratura Soprano, Glenda Raymond.